understanding of what Jesus had really meant, end quote. Despite challenges, the two sorts hypothesis retain wide support. He says, and, and by he, who we were talking about B.H. Streeter. Okay? So, he says that there is no information in them about Jesus' parents, place of birth, teachings, trial, nor crucifixion. Wells also argues that Paul and the other epistle writers, the earliest Christian writers, do not provide any support for the idea that Jesus lived in the first century. For Paul, Jesus may have existed many decades, if not centuries before. For Wells, the Jesus of the early Christians was a pure myth derived from mystical speculations stemming from the Jewish wisdom tradition, while the Gospels were subsequent works of historical fiction. According to this view, the earliest strata of the New Testament literature presented Jesus as, quote, a basically supernatural personage only obscurely on earth as a man at some unspecified period in the past, end quote. In the Jesus myth, Wells argues that two Jesus narratives fused into one. Paul's mythical Jesus and a minimally historical Jesus whose teachings were preserved in the Q documents, a hypothetical common source for the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. <clears throat> Richard Carrier argues that Paul is actually writing about a celestial deity named Jesus. He notes that there is little, if any, concrete information about Christ's early life in the Pauline epistles, even though Jesus is mentioned over 300 times. Carrier points out that according to Paul, Philippians 2 and 7, Christ came in the likeness of man. That's quote, unquote. He came in the likeness of man. Homo iomati anthropon. That's the Greek and was found in, uh, quote, in a form like a man, schemati earthes hos anthropos, that's the Greek, and in Romans 8.3, that he was only sent, quote, in the likeness of sinful flesh, end quote, in homo iomati sarcos hamatias, again in Greek. This is a doctrine of a pre-existent being assuming a human body, but not being fully transformed into a man, just looking like one, end quote. Robert M. Price, Robert M. Price wrote that, quote, the historical Jesus problem replicates itself in the case of Paul, end quote, and that the epistles have the same limitations as the gospel as historical evidence. He sees the epistles as a compilation of fragments, possibly with a Gnostic core. He argues that passages such as Galatians 1, 18 through 20, Galatians 4 and 4, and 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 11, are late Catholic interpolations and explanations and that 1 Thessalonians 2, 14 through 16 was unlikely to have been written by a Jewish person. <clears throat> in general, modern scholars who worked in the field largely agree that Jesus himself did exist historically but scholars do differ on the historicity of specific episodes described in the biblical account 
accounts of Jesus. And the only two events subject to, quote, almost universal assent, end quote, are that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and was crucified by the order of the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate. Although some argue that, quote, the only thing New Testament scholars seem to agree on is Jesus' historical existence, end quote. Christ's myth, myth theories find virtually no support from scholars. According to New Testament scholar Bart D. Ehrman, E-H-R-M-A-N, most people who study the historical period of Jesus believe that he did exist and do not write in support of the Christ myth theory. Ehrman, Ehrman also notes that these views would prevent one from getting employment in a religious study department, studies department. These views are so extreme and so unconvincing to 99.99% .99 of the real experts that anyone holding them is as likely to get a teaching job in an established department of religion as a six-day creationist is likely to land on in a bona fide department of biology. Okay? So a creationist is not going to get a job in, in, in the department of biology. They, they don't believe in evolution. Okay? So, additionally, Ehrman levies stronger criticism against the first, quote-unquote, universally agreed upon claim put forth by Price that there is no mention of a miracle working Jesus in secular sources. Ehrman points out that we don't have archaeological or textual evidence for the existence of most people in the ancient world, even famous people like Pontius Pilate, whom the myth theorists, theorists agree was involved. Quote, and what record from that decade do we have from his reign? End quote. Ehrman asks, quote, what Roman records of his major accomplishments, his daily itinerary, the decrees he passed, the laws he issued, the prisoners he put on trial, the death warrants he signed, his scandals, interviews, interviews his judicial proceedings. We have none. Nothing at all, end quote. Here's another quote. The same is true of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus. Due to his treachery and betrayal of his own people, Josephus not only saved his skin during the Jewish war, but also became a personal favorite of the Roman emperor Vespian, end quote. Says Robert Hutchinson in his book, searching for Jesus. He continues, quoting Ehrman, end quote, yet despite being a personal friend of the emperor, how often is Josephus mentioned in Greek and Roman sources of his day, the first century common era? Never, end quote. Maurice Casey, theologian and scholar of the New Testament, and early Christianity stated that the belief among professors that Jesus existed is generally completely certain. According to Casey, the view that Jesus did not exist is the, quote, view of extremists and dis dis demonstrably false, end quote. And that, quote, Professional scholars generally regarded as having been settled in serious scholarship long ago, end quote. Writing in 1977, classical historian and popular author Michael Grant concluded, quote, modern critical methods fail to support the Christ myth theory, end quote. In support of this, he quoted Roderick Dunkerley's 1957 opinion, <coughs> excuse me, that the Christ myth theory has, quote, 
again and again been answered and annihilated by first rank scholars, end quote. At the same time, he also quoted Otto Betz, B-E-T-Z, Betz's 1968 opinion that in recent years, quote, no serious scholar has ventured to postulate the non-historicity of Jesus, end quote, or at any rate, very few. And they have not succeeded in disposing of the much stronger, indeed very abundant, evidence to the contrary, end quote. That's the end quote. R. Joseph Hoffman, who had created the Jesus Project, which included both mythicists and historicists to investigate the historicity of Jesus, wrote that there were problems with the adherence to the Christ myth theory. They were asking to set up a separate section of the project for those committed to the theory, which Hoffman felt signaled a lack of necessary skepticism. He noted that most members of the project did not reach the mythicist conclusion. Okay, that concludes part five. Thanks for listening. Now, our contact information is the Seekers of Unlimited Life Ministry, 1337 South Millard Avenue. That's M-I-L-L-A-R-D. We're in Chicago, Illinois, 60623. You can call us at 773-474-0451 or drop us an email at the Soul Ministry at gmail.com. That's T H E S O U L M I N I S T R Y, all one word, at gmail.com. We're right around the corner from the historic Stone Temple Church, which is now a landmark in the city of Chicago. It is the only black church on the west side that allowed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to speak from a pulpit because of the opposition against the slain civil rights leader by the late Mayor Richard J. Daley. Please remember now that God loves you and so do we. To make a seed or love offering, download the Tithely, Tithely app. That's T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y app. Then please search for the Seekers of Unlimited Life and follow the instructions that represents your level of goodwill. In other words, donate as much as you like. Now, 100% of the donations goes to promoting our series, our many various series. Please, if you will, tune in again. God bless you.